Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to ever discuss further into differential equations and look further into the predator prey systems. And now in this video, I'm going to go over part two of example two, which I did part one in my last video, and it's this example. In my last video, I did parts A and B, but now in this video, I'm going to go over C and D over here. And now quickly to recap on the question, we're basically modifying the Latka Volterra equations that I went over before. And then we had these modeling, uh, these equations, this one is dr over dt is the growth rate of rabbits or the prey, and dw over dt is the growth rate of the wolves or the predator. So you have these equations and then part A states uh, basically what we were doing is according to these equations what happens to the rabbit population in the absence of wolves. Part B was finding the equilibrium solutions and explain their significance. And in fact, in my last video, I forgot to explain their significance, uh, but but I uh, wrote it down right here. So part A, we when we had the wolves are zero, what we get is the growth rate of the rabbits is simply the logistic equation, which looks like this over here, where the population reaches the carrying capacity K, which is 5,000. And then basically in the absence of wolves, rabbit population stabilizes 5,000. Again, make sure to watch my last video to get caught up on this. And then part A, and then part B, the constant uh, solutions or the equilibrium solutions are when the growth rates are both zero for both of the populations. And then these are when, when we have that scenario. So when both of the populations are zero, nothing's growing, or when the population of the wolves is zero, then you have the logistic equation, our approach is 5,000. And then the case three is basically when uh, the population of rabbits is 1,000, wolves is 64, and then these counteract each other, and then it stabilizes the population. So the significance of each, this is what I forgot to write down in my last video, but anyway, so case one, both populations are zero, so can't grow. And case two, with no wolves present, the rabbit population maxes out at 5,000, hence the uh, logistic equation. In case three, as I just stated, the predator-prey interaction balances out and the populations are stable. And again, that's 1,064 right there. So now let's look at part C. So part C states the figure shows the phase trajectory that starts at the point 1,040. So that's over here. And then describe what eventually happens to the rabbit and wolf population. So you have W here and you have R right here on this axis. And again, uh, recall from uh, again, the case three is when we had 1,000 rabbits and 64 is when they eventually stabilize. And in fact, that is this exact center right here. So that point right there is the uh, at 1,000 and then about 64. And that's, we've already calculated this. So basically at 1,064, that's when it stabilizes. Yeah, but now if we were to describe what eventually happens to the rabbit and wolf populations, well, you start off here at 1,040. And then let's go to the maximum on the right side all the way across here, which is about, this is about 16-ish hundred uh, wolves. So basically increase in wolf population, I mean increase in rabbit population, this is rabbits. So you have a, a maximum of 1,600 here, and then the number of wolves is roughly, I would say, uh, if this is 55 in between, I'll just say 52 or 53-ish. I'm just guessing right, to that, right there, like that. So roughly uh, 1,600 uh, rabbits and 53 wolves, but then add here, we have a lot of wolves, so then, and there's a lot of rabbits, so then the rabbit population starts decreasing as the wolf population starts increasing. And let's go all the way here for a maximum here of, uh, let's draw this along, along this 1,000 here. So this is about at 1,000 rabbits, and this is 70, I'll just go roughly 80, right there, 80 wolves. But then there's a lot of wolves, less rabbits, so then the rabbits are, starts dying off. Yeah, and when there's less rabbits, and then basically the wolves can't, their food supply is gone, or the uh, the predator's food supply is gone, so they decrease as well, and getting to uh, this point, the least rabbits, so the least rabbits about, it's roughly about this 800, and I'll write this, this is about 65, 60, I'll just go 67, or 60, 
uh, seven wolves right there. Yeah, but now that there's uh, barely any rabbits, the wolves are dying off, allowing the rabbits to again gain some ground. And then going up to here, this is about the lowest. Yeah, so they're gaining ground while the wolf population drops at its lowest here. And at this point is about a thousand rabbits. And this is about 55. Well, let's go 50. Uh, seven or 58, let's go 57 wolves right there. Yeah, and then the rabbit population starts increasing because there's the least amount of wolves, but then as it increases again, uh, it stops to increase at a certain point when the wolf population starts increasing. This is about uh, 1100, and then this is about, I'm just putting all these because part D, we're gonna have to sketch them and I'll, I'll use these points. This is about 1100 and about 60, I'll write 63, like that. And then as you can see, the same thing happens, it's going to repeat the cycle, but each time getting closer and closer to this stabilizing value of 1064, uh, 1000 rabbits, 64 wolves. So it goes up to here, goes down all the way, and stabilizes there. Yeah, so now let's uh, just write that down, so part see the population of wolves and rabbits fluctuate around 64 and 1000 respectively so 64 wolves 1000 rabbits and eventually stabilize at those values and now let's look at part d so i did all these points because in part d we're gonna have to sketch them so part d states sketch the populations of the rabbit and wolf populations as functions of time again we don't have the solutions for them but we just have these points right here so we can roughly sketch how they look like. So yeah, let's just scroll down here, and I've written down over here. So basically, yeah, basically what we have here is a sketch of the rabbit and wolf populations with time, as shown below, and I just copied this graph from my calculus book just to save some time. So we have the rabbit population on the left axis, which is in black, and then the uh, W or the wolves is on the is, is graphed according to the secondary axis right here on the right right here so the gray is wolves and on the right and then the rabbits is uh, in black right there so if you look at this we have yeah, at the at this point right here initially when time is zero we have the initial values of 1,000 uh, rabbits and then we have this 40 wolves right here that's over there. So that's the 40 wolves that uh, corresponds to this side. And now let's look at what happens when we have the highest rabbit population at this point right here. This is at rabbit is equal to roughly, all right, roughly 1600. As you can see, this, if that's 1500, 1600, somewhere over there. And then this corresponds to, draw this line down across. So this corresponds to, let's say, time t1. So we don't know the time t1, but uh, we'll just say there's a time t1 right here when the rabbit population is at its maximum. And then the wolf population is somewhere over here. And that's about 50-ish. But if we scroll up to our graph, just to get a better estimation. So again, this goes up all the way to 1600. So the, my calculus book basically graphs it according to this sketch. So you have 1600 and roughly 53. And then the next point, at the highest wolf population is 80 and there's a thousand rabbits so we'll see if that oh, I'll just show you that, that that's there as well so right here this is about uh, wolf is um, write this a bit neater so wolf is roughly equal to uh, 53 so that's the wolf population there and then when we have at the highest wolf population is over here and this is roughly about this 80 so we have wolf is roughly 80. And then, and then at this point right here, if we go down all the way across, we have this uh, roughly there, just a bit off. But this one here is the rabbit population, and that's roughly 1,000, exactly as stated uh, uh, earlier. And then, and then what we end up having again, it's going to be, it's gonna be the same thing. We go to the lowest uh, rabbits, 800, about 67. And that should be about the the lowest rabbit. So this is about 800. And then, then this one at this time, this is T2. This one is about T3 right there. And that is about, uh, so this was at, yeah, I believe all the way up here, about 67 right here. 
so that's uh, that's where the wolf population is about 67 and then we had yeah, uh, 67 800 and it keeps going on and on and again this one is the initial value uh, this at this point right here is at t1 here is at t2 and this is at our t3 so that's when the time uh, is t1 t2 and t3 etc and then you it keeps going up and up so it fluctuates and then eventually levels off at this uh, values of uh, this was yeah, this value here is 64. That's 64 wolves uh, equals wolf. And then over here is when we have the rabbit equals 2, 1,000. So it levels off at those values. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how the, gra the sketch of the, the two populations will look like through time. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this pretty interesting example on, on uh, wolf and rabbit populations or just predator-prey systems. So when, when you add the logistic model to it, what you see is that it eventually stabilizes in this circular trajectory all the way to a single point. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.